Hi everyone, I'm Sostine and welcome to my channel. Oh my goodness, it has been like three months since my last update and I want to say sorry and also give you an explanation. Uh, since the last time we spoke, I quit my job and we moved back to the Midwest. Uh, more on that later, but yes, that does mean that in the last 12 months, I have sold a house, moved to the East Coast, lived in the East Coast for a few months, quit my job, and relocated back. I have packed up 4,400 square feet of house into pods, and here we are back in the Midwest. I am currently in an Airbnb, so if you see my surroundings changing up a lot, that is why. Let's get to the sewing. Today, we're going to make a dress that I have been slowly working on for the past four months. It's the Meet Felicity dress. This is a dress I have wanted to make for a very, very long time, partially because it is one of my three favorite Felicity outfits. Felicity, as you know, is the reason I am in 18th century costuming today and do it so frequently. In fact, I think this is like my fourth 18th century costume in a row. Do I even know how to make outfits from other centuries? And partially because I really wanted to make an 18th century day dress that I could mix and match really easily and be a really versatile part of my wardrobe. So yeah, cotton and linen, so much easier to wear in the warmer months, even with stays on and all the different layers, it's still really cool. So let's get back to the Meet Felicity dress. The Meet Felicity dress is this brown and striped fabric with roses on it. The original Felicity doll came with the dress on and she had a shift underneath. And I remember being so blown away. Whenever someone asked me, what got you into historical costuming? I say this girl right here, Felicity Merriman. And she was incredible. Her books were really fun and I loved how detailed all the accessories were. One thing that I remember completely blowing me away about this particular outfit is that the fabric was a miniaturized version of an actual fabric from the Musée Décoratif in Paris. Roses et Railleurs, which roughly translates to roses and stripes. You can actually buy a reproduction of this fabric on Spoonflower. But incidentally, Virgil's Fine Goods, which is run by Amber, put out this fabric. It was so close to the original Roses et Railleurs fabric that I actually thought that this was it. I apologize, that was a mistake on my part, but it's so close and it's so beautiful. I went ahead and bought 10 yards of it. It is a cotton and linen blend, so it sews up beautifully and feels so good in your hand that I was just st struck by how delicious the fabric was and I couldn't wait to work with it. It actually ended up sewing up really nicely. So what, now that we have the fabric, um, for the pattern, I went and used the Angelica pattern, the one that Virgil's Fine Goods and Screw Patterns also put out, just completely coincidence I seem to get a lot of stuff from her her store is amazing and the thing I loved about this pattern is I made it with for my yellow Angelica dress but I don't think I like you understood the nuances of that era and how to sew it very well so there were some new, newer techniques I want to try I want to practice a little bit more so I was really excited to use that pattern again now that we have an idea a fabric and a pattern let's get to the sewing but before that I would like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor me. Hi everyone, I'm Sosteen and today my video is sponsored by History is Worn, which is a book written by me and published with Honest History Productions about the history of fashion written for 8 to 12 year olds, but really can be interesting for people of all ages and levels of knowledge. In particular, I try to talk about how fashion makes sense and how the changes in fashion make sense with history and how fashion was really not just about clothing, but a cultural statement and how it made sense for where you were living, when you were living and what you had around you. I also talk a little bit about different cultures, Asian cultures, African cultures, as well as talking about cultural appropriation and what that is and how it pertains to fashion. I'm really, really proud of this book. Katie McLaughlin did some beautiful art for this book and I hope you love it. If you are interested, please go to Honest History and put in an order or whoever your local bookseller is to put in an order. So thanks so much. Now back to making the dress. Now, again, we have the fabric, and before I did, I had to make a muslin. Now, originally, dresses in this era were lined with linen. However, I actually don't love linen as a lining because it's very wibbly-wobbly. It tends to stretch a lot and lose a lot of structure, which is a lot of problems that I ran into when I was working on my yellow dress last year. So this time, I said, eh, I'm not gonna use linen. I don't care if I'm not historically accurate. I'm going to use cotton twill that's very stiff. So Nami came over, she and I had made muslins and we both tried them and fitted them on each other. I actually had to do very little to change up these group patterns. At the same time, Nami did help me like corner in the shoulders a little bit so it was a little bit more comfortable. And at the end, I think I came up with a perfect 
pattern that fit me just right. Now that I had that to work with, I went ahead and started on the dress itself. Normally, uh, for these dresses, we almost always start with the back seams because those have the most structure in them. To match up the stripes as best as I could, I cut out one piece at a time and used that cut piece as a pattern to match up the stripes in a perfect mirror. This was slow, but it came out with a beautifully set of mirrored pieces. The 18th century method of sewing requires you to iron in the seam allowances first and then match up the pieces wrong side to wrong side and then baste them together and then hand sew them using the English stitch. I've gone into the stitch in prior videos so I won't focus too much on it here where it's harder to see with this particular fabric. It was so satisfying to open up the seam and see the chevron pattern with all the matched stripes. The sides were added one piece at a time with the outer fabric sewn on first and then the lining. This was done for both side pieces as well as the front. I then hand sewed the sleeves in, in the 18th century method described in the English dress pattern by at the side of the golden scissors.com. This was done by sewing in the dart first, then ironing the seam allowance along the bottom and side of the sleeve, both the exterior and the lining, then pinning the two sides together. I pulled the lining edge away from one of the sides and pinned the sleeve together. I sewed the exterior to the other two layers by using a space backstitch around 8 to the inch. And then flipped the inside lining outwards, then sewed it flat with a whip stitch. This results in a fully finished sleeve you can add on that's already hemmed. I then sewed the sleeve onto the bodice. Since I go into how this is done in a lot of my other videos, I'll just skim it today. I then hemmed the skirt before I pleated it to the right width.
Once I was happy with the pleating, I cut and hemmed a pocket slit on each side by hand sewing a 1 8 inch hem about 10 inches down. Once that was done, I folded in the seam allowance on the bottom of the bodice back and then sewed it to the skirt using a very strong 30 weight silk thread around 12 stitches to the inch. And then once I did that, the dress was done. Now for this dress, I actually did make myself new pockets. Now Felicity has her own pockets in the American Girl Doll collection. If you recall, you could get her own underwear. Felicity's pocket, it's very clearly, it's a miniaturized version of a pocket that's in the collection of Colonial Williamsburg. And of course, so I got the original pocket, actually digitized that on my Baby Lock Palette 11 software, as well as stitched it out on my Baby Lock Venture. Once that was fully stitched out in glorious silk threads, the original was wool, but that was not happening because I hate working with wool threads. I went ahead and put that together using a cotton backing as well as some double folded bias tape. And then I went ahead and put it on. And one thing that really struck me about this dress is one, how comfortable it is. The arm movements were really easy. I found it very easy to walk in and I just really loved the whole look of it. I was really, really pleased with how it came out. And I also liked how it looked with my fichu. I highly recommend making your own if you're interested. I did link all the supplies down below. I'll also link my book below. If you would like your own pocket kit, don't forget to comment below with your favorite era in history. Three of these pocket kits will be given away. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget the bell.